This episode of Old School Sessions is brought to you by Diesel Freak. So we're back here again. We're still in Halapa, uh talking with uh, the guys here. And uh, we're going to start back up with a story that uh, Mr. Richard wanted to tell us about that had to do with Mont Eagle. So if you guys yeah. have done any trucking on the East Coast, uh, going north or south, you're, that, you're going to know about that particular path. So take it away. Yeah. And I remember I was pulling a trailer back years ago. They did not have parking brakes on trailers. All they had on them was just an air tank, which they all have now. But when you put the park brake on, the doggone trailer, once that air leaked off, sitting still, you had no brakes. You sometimes when you go to hook up to one, you might have to chase it a couple of feet. Oh yeah. You know, if, if it was sitting on pretty good, like good concrete, you know, where it was good and level, you might have to chase it a couple of foot before if you didn't have the dollies jacked up enough. Well, anyway, I was crossing my nigo coming home. With the, you know, I loaded plants up, and I was bringing back potatoes because that's all I ever brought back from up there. And I started off that mountain, and this was before they widened it. Remember when it was just the narrow two lanes and the yep. jagged rocks? Mm -hmm. And the, yep. the runaway had ramp. Had the runaway ramp down the there. The runaway yeah. ramp was on the right side of the mountain. Mm -hmm. And if you went through the one array ramp, you were just out into the wild blue yonder. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was a PIE truck that did that one trip. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I started off of there, and I'm just holding it back. Cause no jake break on that caterpillar. And I'm just holding it back, and then all of a sudden, I heard, next thing I knew, my earbuds had come on. And old tractor brakes hit, and then they were gone. And all I had was a tractor brake. And by the time I got halfway down, I just, you could hit the brakes, they wouldn't even slow it down. So, you know, without any power steering, you was basically, you would stand up in that seat to Turn. pull that wheel. And I made it down. I got down off the mountain. And you know, where it's flat and level down to there, mm -hmm. yeah. I just let it coast. Let her go. Yeah. I just let her ride. I just. Hell, I was passing trucks like I knew what I was doing, man. I was hauling out. <laughs> and finally it slowed down and braced the cool where I could pull it down. And I pulled over to the shoulder of the road. I was going to see what was wrong with the trailer so I could, you know, fix it. And I stepped out of that truck and fell flat on my back into the right lane. <laughs> I, my legs were so wobbly. I was so wobbly. My legs, I couldn't stand up. So I crawled on my hands and knees. I got to the front of that truck and I leaned up against the radiator and I, or the bumper and I'm just sitting there. And then the state trooper went by and he, I guess he looked over some because he came back. And he walked up on the right hand side of the truck and I was starting to load a, run a light a cigarette and my hand's doing like this, <laughs> you know. My hand was shaking, I was so scared, I, you know, I was, <laughs> heart was still going. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And he asked me what happened. I told him the experience I just had, and uh, he told me just go ahead and sit there. He said, <laughs> "What are you going to do if you can't fix it?" I said, "I'm going to go on to the house." He said, "We well, don't have no brakes on the trailer." I said, "Well, don't tell nobody." <laughs> and uh, but it, I fixed it. It was you know airline busted a supply line, and uh, so I just basically back then you could cut them, put you a piece of copper tubing, two clamps, and away you went. Yeah. I remember I sat there, I bet, over an hour and a half, leaned up against the front of that truck and just letting it vibrate my whole yeah, body. I'd laid my head back and my head started shaking like this, you know, and everything was just bouncing all over creation. Yeah. But it, it scared the daylights out of me because I, I knew there was, it was like once a month or so, somebody would get killed coming off oh, that yeah. mountain. Yeah, that reminded me of the story of Dad. And he, them old gas burners with the vacuum brakes and stuff. Mm -hmm. He said he was up there pulling that mountain and the truck started running hot and he pulled over to the side and there's a guy standing over looking over the edge of the mountain. And he asked the guy if he could get a rock and tuck it underneath his wheel. <laughs> and the guy told him to go to hell. And he's just still looking over there. So finally, Daddy, he said he backed it up and let it sit up against the mountain to hold it. And he walked over and asked that guy, he says, uh, why wouldn't you get a rock and put it underneath my wheel? And he, Guy said, well, there wasn't nobody here to put a rock underneath the wheel when I needed one. <laughs> <laughs> he rocked it down off the, <laughs> off the mountain. Here at Diesel Freak, located in Gaylord, Michigan, just an hour south of Mackinac Bridge, we offer the parts, turbos, manifolds, injectors, fleet service, down to your owner-operator. We have customers with race applications. 
We have a dyno for diagnostics. What we like to do along with our own apparel is make apparel for others as well. Hats, t-shirts, decals, vehicle graphics. From mild to wild for your truck here at Diesel Freak. Daddy had me do that. I was back when I was riding with him in that international. We had gone up into the Arapaho Reservation west of uh, Denver. And you know, out there in them little 318s, when you was in them mountains back there, you know, you just grind and grind and grind to get to the top. And 70 wasn't finished. So you had to get off and go by Vail and all the ski resorts and so forth. And we went up in there. And Daddy bought this. We stopped at a store and he bought this big old box of wooden matches. I mean, they were the big, they was big, half as big as a pencil. You know, and it, this for curiosity, you know, I thought about what's he gonna do with him, you know? He's got a cigarette lighter in the truck. He pushes it in on what the hell does he need with a box of matches? So we went on up and we loaded, loaded with spruce. And we come back down, we was coming back toward Denver. And as we were coming back to Denver, we stopped at a little store. You know, it was snowing, it wasn't bad. And uh, that's why maybe when you said about that rock, you know, we stopped at that little store, and that's where he bought them, them wood matches. matches. And so we come on down, and when we finally it got to me, I had to ask. Him. And he says, uh, you know, he told me, he says, you know, I asked him, why'd you buy that box? He says, son, he says, if this old truck quits out here in the middle of nowhere, he said, we're going to be warm for a long time. <laughs> and I said, how's that? He says, it's going to be the biggest bonfire you ever laid eyes. He said, I almost set the whole load on fire. <laughs> and that's why he was in, but, so we got on back to, went past Vail and so forth, and got back up there at, uh, what is that, the Colorado Springs? It was out there somewhere yeah. near the yeah, scale. That's down. where we yeah. got back on, and we started coming back, and his brakes were getting hot. So we pulled over on the side of the road, and he told me to get out and get a rock. I got one that's about the size of a <laughs> basketball, and I set it in front of that front tire. And he let off the brake, and it just pushed that rock out of, right out of the way. Wouldn't hold it back. And so and he said, well, we'll try something else. He put the old Detroit in gear. And he let off on a clutch and on it. Pop, 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 pop. It was pushing it with the, with the throttle pulled out on, you know, the shutoff valve. And he said, well, I don't know what we can do. He try backing up. But finally, they cooled. He said, we sat there long enough where they'd hold. And I remember we let, we sat there, I guess, a couple of hours. It was cold as a whipper wheel out there, you know. Well, truck wouldn't run but 660 degrees in the summertime, and you can imagine in it cold as it was there, and I, I guess zero or right about. And finally, the brakes cooled off enough for the, what the tractor would hold without the trailer and vice versa. And I got out there, he sent me back there to tighten the brakes back up, and then we finally come on after we, I got the brakes tightened back up. But I remember that, that was one trip I said, man, I ain't got no use out here. So, <laughs> I know up there, we were talking about that Mount Eagle up there. I, I come down through there one night, and uh, I don't want to name the company name, but it's a moving company that went into haul and freight. And a uh, perfect example of not following too close to your buddy, mm -hmm. right? Two of them, two beautiful truck trailers, all the same color, decked out the same bumper to bumper in that runaway ramp. Because mm. one was following too close, and, when he, went, and he just and the other went following right in the line, <laughs> down in there. Good. Know? And uh, yeah, so and I used to stop all the time up there before Jake breaks and all that. Stop up there, I would get myself a can of Coke at that little store right there in the top there. Mm -hmm. I had CB oh, yeah, and stuff like that, and come off the side road and just start first, just ease. When it got up high enough, go into second. And then finally, when you get up about fourth, then you have to start using the brake once in a while. But usually by that time, you has the runaway ramp. He and taught me how to come off there without a jake brake. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't have one. <laughs> well, because that Kenworth didn't have one. And I told him about my little problem I'd had coming off there. And he told me, just, well, just hold them from the top all the way down. you out of your mind. You know, they'll melt before I get off there. That's the way he did it. I tried it and it worked. Is that, right? that was the story of Blaine. Yeah. Old, old timer told yeah. the story. I've seen a couple of guys. I was coming coming out of the 
called Cabbage up in Oregon. And I dropped off that hill, I'll never forget, it was on July the 4th, years ago. And it was early morning, but bright sunshine, like 6 o'clock, beautiful day out there. And I heard these two guys, and one said, well, I've never been down this, this mountain here. And I said, well, it's not that bad. But uh, he said, I'll tell you what to do. He says, uh, okay, he says, here's what you do. Put your foot on the foot brake, that's it. Now let off the foot brake and pull down on your hand brake. Okay, pull down. Okay, let off the hand brake and put the foot. <laughs> and so I'm about halfway down that mountain, he's along, and I'm going, where are these guys at? Boy, when they passed me, they were like this. <laughs> Right? And when they passed us, they were shaking, going on down the hill. The one guy says, said, man, he says, I'm looking in here. He says, I got smoke coming off of my, the one in the front, I got smoke coming off my wheels back here off the trailer. Our guy said, oh, don't worry about that, it's normal. You have to worry when you see flames. <laughs> Boy, did they pass me. Well, when I got to the bottom of the hill and I eased off, both of them were running all along there, bumper to bumper, at about 35 miles an hour. And I hauled on the CV to the one guy. I said, man, I said, you guys really know how to come off that hill, don't you? <laughs> and that guy said, yeah, we did pretty good. I believe so. I said, one gear too high. <laughs> and they were scared. 30, 35 miles an hour and going down the interstate. <laughs> Yeah, they always pick on me coming off of Mount Eagle because it's like saying got a jig break. Yeah, yeah, right. You got it. I'm, I'm real slow, and they, hey, buddy, what's wrong? Is this your first time down the mountain? You know, going that slow. I said, reach up here and flip off that jig break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that that'd give you a whole attitude adjustment. Yeah, with jig break, I come off slow. Now they've done. You can come off of there with no brakes. You'll get. Oh yeah, the way they got that road. Like the yep, speed of sound, but yep, they really you remember when you used to yep. go up the north side and come down the north side mm -hmm. oh you can come down there real quick on, you yeah you they said it left it like that it was a lot easier coming down and but then they, they thought they were straightening it out and all they did was just made it worse well the problem with having they these took the big rock out of the middle of the road they come off there so yep. fast and they think they got it made but they never think about the unexpected well, there could be a wreck down there at the bottom of the hill or anything and they're gonna fly right in there with right them. at the top one day I, I come on down there and a the guy was easing down it's a large trucking company that everybody used to pick on. <laughs> and anyway, they had a cab over. And his side box door was open back underneath the sleeper. And he had the door of his truck holding on the rail and kicking it shut <laughs> with his right leg when I passed by. <laughs> he tried to close that side pocket. So he must have been a tall fella. And and I said, oh man, look at this, you know. He but lucky enough, he was just starting at the crest where he started, you know. Uh -huh. And he was kicking it. He was hanging on that on the rail right there, hand grab bar, and just <laughs> kicking the hell out of that thing. Of the Boy, I said, whew, I hope he makes it to the bottom, buddy. <laughs> like I say, I don't want to name the name of that company, but it was a well-known <laughs> company at the time It used to do stuff. I would go out of my way to go around that mountain. Yep. I'd either go down through Alabama or well, I'd cut across. My daddy would always cut across up in Kentucky. Right, right. And I'd come down that way because years ago, the 5 o'clock hour, Kentucky turned the scales off. It didn't matter how heavy. Well, it got to point. That's why everybody just started running Alabama because model wise scales, and yeah. no scales and stuff. Yeah, I just you remember we go over to Tracy City and come down? Oh, we yeah. got down there that Most one time and part of, part of the road was gone. And there's yeah. just enough room for a truck to go through. It was there. his turn because he yeah, was, I was leading up front. and I was following. Yeah, I was up front. We sure as hell couldn't back up. We couldn't back up. <laughs> we got out and looked at it, you know, and I said, I don't know. I said, Richard. I said, Bulldozer had yeah. just cut a path wide enough for two tire tracks yeah. Yeah. is all it was yeah. and they were cars and pickup trucks coming this way and here me and him sit you know and it's on where you don't just pull the tractor brakes on you set the truck and track it was, it was yeah. steep it's like 10 percent grade yeah. so anyway i told richard i said richard if i don't make it across don't come behind me. <laughs> 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 i said well i ain't even going to start to you used to get back on that asphalt and yeah. what had happened in the mountain i guess the rain it just slid off yeah. mm -hmm. and the road was gone and me and him both we was loaded to the hill with oranges yeah we head we head that's the only reason we was over there to begin with and we got over there and there's no road <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
you know, we're sitting there, and I said, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, I'm glad his ass is in front this time. <laughs> I said, dang, I'd hate to be the gig of him. I said, you know, we sat there, we, ain't no way you can back back up on the old road. Yeah, yeah, we don't you know. You know, it wasn't geared low enough. You know, yeah, especially 10% 10, 10 grade or you know, something And this like is, that. you know, 10, 11 o'clock at night, you know, we figured we'd run down, go around through Tracy City, Murfreesboro, we'd come back out and go on to Nashville. We sat there, I guess, 30 minutes. Yeah, we had to long, study on it a while. We'd look at it and look and look, and we'd find it, we'd just say, hey. Yeah. <laughs> no. Do or die. Yeah. What, what do you think, Richard? <laughs> I said, I think we got our get, choice. <laughs> I said, just open the door and be ready to jump. I said, if so, I'll drop the trailer and we'll just have to have a wrecker come and get it. Cause I wasn't going to attempt to even back up that hill. Because they wasn't, we, we'd have been, they'd have to pick it up with a helicopter to turn it around. <laughs> Sorry, you mentioned that you don't have a jake break if you're 81 Kenworth. So how do you manage to get down on the hills and, and such? I uh, you, you kind of just take it slow and just where you can stay lightly on the brakes. I've always found out and, and have the right gear and don't go too slow. You still got to keep up speed. But it seemed like when you went and you know, a lot of people stab brakes, let it run loose and, Phantoms, stab, and, and, yeah, and stab them hard. And I've always gotten them hot like that. But the main thing is just keep your speed down, you know, and where you can just lightly stay on them and hold the truck back and, and not have to get on them hard. Just for reference, you said keep the speed down. So uh, is that 45 mile an hour? Or no, it, is, it, it depends on this, how steep the grade is. And, uh, you know, Mount Eagle normally uh, always stayed on the low side. And I've got more or less a, it's a nine speed over now, it was a 10 speed over. And you had to start uh, probably somewhere around like third or fourth gear coming down. And then, you know, if you run it enough, then you get down about halfway down and you go to fifth. And then you know the before you get to the bottom of it, hell, you're, you're up, and, you know, up on the high side, you know. <laughs> but it just, uh, just holding it back. I know me and Carla was out in, uh, going to uh, Wolf Creek Pass out there and you, Going west, you don't know you're climbing a mountain. And we got out there on top up there, and it looked like there was a truck parked on the side up there. He's hauling heavy equipment, and I started winding it up coming off of there. And I noticed he was easing down the hill, and I told Carla, oh, she says, oh shit. She says, what's the matter? And I said, we need to slow this thing down. So <laughs> another was, 21 miles, yeah. Another 21 miles, we were down at the bottom. But it's just main thing is just trying to keep your RPMs down. I mean, that's the main thing, because yeah. if not, you'll have to shift up or yeah, let it swing apart. You lose, yeah. But you just, I just pick a gear, and if it's too slow, I'll go on and let it bump up a gear. Mm -hmm. It's just more or less like, if you know the truck, and my truck, I've put about three and a half million miles on it, so I pretty much know about what I can do with it. Mm -hmm. But if you get in a strange truck, you don't, you know, you don't have a clue. It's <laughs> trial and error with yeah. a strange truck, mm -hmm. truck you don't know. I mean, I've gotten them hot. I was coming into San Diego, and I've gotten them hot coming off. Well, I hadn't been out there before, so you really didn't know the hill, and you'd be turning it loose when you shouldn't be turning it loose, and it'd get kind of hot. Well, it doesn't matter at the bottom of that same hill you're talking about. They got a big sign, no engine brakes. <laughs> 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 and they yeah. come right down here. And they town. come right down here. Yeah, I'm not going to use my yeah. brake. Yeah, yeah, buddy. Yeah, yeah. You all just have to hear me coming. That's yeah. it. If you got one. Yeah. So mainly it's just it's trial and error, and if you know your truck, you know, like I say, if I got into somebody else's truck and wasn't really too sure, I'd, I'd be extra careful. I'd, yeah. I'd start down slow if you really don't know it. But you can get yourself in a predicament in a heartbeat if you if you don't really uh, try. You know, take your time. Main thing. Well, your RPMs got a lot to do. Yeah, because yeah. that you over shoot them RPMs, you blow the engine up. Well, that and, 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 and I see a lot of that too. And then your gear ratio, mm -hmm. where that's got 370s in it, so it's really geared kind of high, so it really don't hold back very good. Right. Mm -hmm. Where if you had, you know, uh, 390s or 411s in it, it, it'd hold you back a lot more. But it just, it, you know, it'll turn loose on you. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the same old thing, but it, it pays to know the area because it comes as a surprise when you're coming down there with your Jake brake on uh -huh. trying to take and slow that thing down, you know. And uh, there's a lot of homes right right out there towards yeah. San Diego. Right. And they don't want the noise, which I understand. I wouldn't want to hear it either, you know. But, uh, man, when you, sometimes when you drop down there, you don't have no choice. It's either that or, you know, uh, 
you got a big problem on your hands here. But uh, now I've probably been on almost every grade in the country. Yeah, so right? tell us some stories, you know, from what you record. Go back to like the first time you actually uh, climbed a grade that you know was an experience for well, you. Well. When I lived right here, a mile down the road, and Chucky lived up in town, and we would go to Miami on Monday mornings, <laughs> and we had the CBs with uh, 480 channels and linears, Texas linears on them, and all kinds of stuff. So he could leave his house, and the way the crow flies is probably 20 miles, and we could talk in the CB. So anyway, he said, "Well, he'd be hard. I'm, I'm leaving. I'm leaving." I'm coming your way, and I said, okay, I'm pulling out, but I got this grade. Well, there's no grade between here and Melbourne, Florida. <laughs> the highest point's a dump. <laughs> but anyway, we get on there, and we get talking. I go, well, you'll catch up to me because I got to hit the grade, got to hit the grade. <laughs> so he go, okay, you're on the grade. Okay, how you doing? I said, I'm going down the grade. Going down. And I'll tell you what, you'd be surprised how many people, people would get, get, get back on that. Where are you guys at? Where are you coming in from? We call that, you know? So we couldn't tell them we're in the flatland in Florida. We're three, you know, three feet above sea level, something like that, you know, yeah. But that way we keep in contact the whole yeah, time. time you know? yeah. That way we know how close he's getting to yeah, me. Yeah. So, it's, you know, we could go and not just ease on along and be weak. Yeah, but, mm. yeah. but no, grades, uh, I drove tractor trailers with the ice cream company finally. And I was in my 20s, early 20s. And uh, I was out of Baltimore and we had places in uh, Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, which was over in the western part of Maryland, there's mountains and stuff. And we had Virginia and, and uh, New Jersey and stuff, they had distribution centers. But anyway, uh, so I got my feel in of hills and mountains, but I had, they didn't let me go out right right away. They had a driver, been with the company like 12 years, and I rode with him, and then he let me drive. And you know, and he taught me, told me, yeah, you know, what, what to do, do and uh, you know, about grades, and of course, they had like five distribution places, so he was going to them all the time, you know, and he was very familiar with them where I wasn't, and uh, he would, now, I mean, there's been places like even Level Land. I used to run to Key West back years ago on the, over the Seven Mile Bridge. And the old Seven Mile Bridge, everybody's seen movies of now, you know, where it's taken down, they got a real wide Seven Mile Bridge. But lucky enough in them days, we didn't have eight and a half foot wide trailers. We only had eight foot trailers. And uh, anyway, we go across the Seven Mile Bridge and you would, uh, it was built over top of railroad track. Yeah. And you would actually have to rub your all your tires right on the curb um, where the rail curb. was on both sides and pull your mirror in. That's the way it was in Cairo. And the other guy would too, yeah. because otherwise everybody would be losing their mirrors. Yes. And finally, uh, years and years went by and they rebuilt that. But for a long time, I used to run Key West like once a week down there across that road. And that was, you know, seven miles across there rubbing tires, I mean, not the whole time, but as soon as you see another big truck, truck coming, come. you have to get right up against it. And uh, and everybody down there was familiar with it. I don't remember anybody not knowing to get over as far as you can get, just start rubbing them tires, and then you come off. But today, that would never work. I mean, uh, eight and a half foot trailers, yeah. and they wouldn't be allowed to go across that old seven mile bridge and stuff like that, you know. But, no, about That's the one days. they use to make movies with now, isn't it? Yeah, yeah that, they had that, it still uh, I forget that Arnold Schwarzenegger yeah, movie where they, yeah, they took it out and everything. Uh, uh, I never was on Part that. of it, you know. Yeah, so I used to run that quite a bit when I worked for the food company. And uh, good thing, you know, like I say, it was eight foot wide trailers. And, uh, you know, th how things have changed now. Now they got, even got a scale going in there. Uh, yeah. When you get down, yeah, right after Key Largo, there's a scale. Really? Yeah, uh, where they never had scales before. Yeah, you, you just go down there and do what you have to do, you know. That was about like the Wildwood scale. <laughs> you ain't going to bypass it anyway because no. there ain't no road. You no, know, there, back before they had to, had to have the inner bridge permit, you know. Oh, yeah, right. And anyway, I'd come down to there. You got an inner bridge permit? And I'd holler back at him, yeah, I got one. 
So one time I come down there, you know, and he said, well, bring it in here and let me see it. <laughs> <laughs> so I went in there, you know, and I'd fumble it through my log book, you know, and about that time it was a flatbed, had a load of uh, drag line mats on, and he was over, you know, overweight. There's two of them. Anyway, that DOT man goes, bam, like that on, I got one. Like that right there. Get out know? of here, huh? Uh, yeah, he said he got one. So anyway, that guy come in, he got caught in, up there in Pensacola, right? So he's already had a ticket. So I'm fumbling through there, you know, and I told him, I says, well, I says, you can write me a ticket because I can't find my permit, right? He says, yeah, he says, you know, they turned me loose tonight on this scale. He said, I was down there, I used to run that Key West scale. We didn't have near the traffic like we do down here. <laughs> <laughs> he was just, I guess he never got well, somebody overloaded. Especially at, at night down there. Speaking yeah. yeah. of yeah. that story, remember when, back, I guess, when y'all said the trucks, Cowboy that had Lincoln on back then, right? Mm -hmm. you remember that Kenworth and American used to slide it when you. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'd come with it. Especially in Georgia. You hit your brakes yeah, and Yeah, Georgia was real, real bad. Yeah, and you scary. kept your fifth wheel split up, you know, where it'd scoot real easy. Mm -hmm. So when you pulled in there, you just kind of hit your brakes and it'd scoot up. And it would stop right at 45, or right at 55 foot. So I pulled up there, you know, and I stopped and it slowed down and got it sucked up and everything. I pulled up on the scale. So he comes out there. And he's got that uh, weight thing holding the scale back here, you know, and he's up there and he's got, I got the pole lamp up there, he's up there to the pole lamp and he's looking at me and he's looking at that. It's 55 foot, ain't it? <laughs> like that right there. <laughs> yeah, I got there and I see you scooting it up right back there. And I said, well, you can get me a ticket for either obstructing traffic, but you ain't going to get me one for over length. So he went ahead and let me get you. I'll keep my eye out for you. And you would take off, you could scoot it. Yeah, you'd slide scoot it back when you change gears yeah, and then get mad at slide back. Yeah, they got me back here on that first scale Valdosta, but I run the back road. And he pulled me over, and if at that time it's 55 foot total length. Right. Tractor in trailer. Trailer, yeah. So he wrote me up a ticket for being back there for being over 55 foot, 60 some feet, whatever. And then he's pulled it out, and that was the last ticket in the book. He <laughs> says, You know, I give you another ticket. I said, Now what? He said, Because your trailer's eight and a half foot wide. And you're only allowed eight foot wide at that time. Too. Yeah, yeah. That guy, it was back on 41, a little too lame back in there. And he, so he let me go with the one ticket. Of course, I set my cash Had them off signs and, posted yeah, everywhere. Get <laughs> a wide trailer. There. Yeah. Now you can't find a narrow trailer, so they no. that, those signs are gone. Yeah. I got stopped in uh, where was it? Uh, Wisconsin, years and years ago. That hill, right there, it drops into Minneapolis, Minnesota, right there, mm -hmm. you know, across mm -hmm. the Mississippi. Anyway, I got pulled over there for speeding. There was two state troopers, Wisconsin troopers. And they had to take me, they put me in their car and took me like 30, 40 miles up to this courthouse. And I had to put a $50 bond up, right? So anyway, then they drive, they were nice guys. We were talking all the way, you know, like we were buddies forever. They take me back to my truck and I get in there, right before I get there, you know, I said, well, you know, I said, it's a shame because we're out of state and they know we're not going to come back. Yeah. And he says, well, he said, we don't have no reciprocity law with Florida. So if you never come back, we just keep your 50 bucks and never goes on your driver like, I'm out of here, buddy. I, you <laughs> keep that $50. Week, though, you? Yeah, you know, I, don't, I don't care. You know, no, because I didn't want the points and stuff yeah, like exactly. that. Nobody wants all the points on their driving license. So I said, no. That was good, you know. And yeah, a lot of them carry you to jail. I was up in Maryland, and they were on 301, it said a scale down there. Right. Uh -huh. And I was over, and uh, my brother-in-law was with me, right? First time, you know, he was going to New York City, and anyway, uh, they carried me to jail where I could bail myself out, and he was worried to death where in the hell I was at. But yeah, they used to carry you to jail, and you'd more or less post bond, it's what you was doing. Yeah. And we got up here in New York City, got up there and unloaded a great big looking old dog. Is there? He says, uh, uh, Ricky says, damn, he said, that sure is an ugly dog. I said, ain't no dog, that's a big rat. <laughs> <laughs> that was in the Bronx. Yeah, was yeah. Up there. Uh, yeah God. Uh, well, guys, that, that was really great talking about, uh, you know, what's like pulling grades and everything. Uh, so uh, that's it for, for this episode, and we'll, we'll pick back up with uh, run-ins with uh, DOT, law enforcement, and what it was like back then. So we'll see you guys in the next go-round.
Do you have trucking veterans in your area that would be willing to sit down and recount some stories from the golden days of trucking? Would you like to host a session at your diner or chrome shop? Or would your business like to sponsor an episode of Old School Sessions? If so, follow the link below and get in contact.